here to stay
A club record 19 league matches unbeaten, eight wins out of a possible nine. And Sheffield Wednesday are sitting very pretty at the top of Skybet League One. But it's our aim, of course, to try to knock them off their perch. That won't be easy for Dean Holden's men this afternoon, but when the big clubs come to SE7, that sometimes brings the very best out of us. Second place Plymouth, fifth place Derby and sixth place Barnsley have all been beaten at the Valley this season. Now, can we add the Owls to that list of promotion-chasing clubs to leave South East London empty-handed? We've got a packed pre-game show to bring you before kick-off. Here's a taster of what's to come. We'll hear exclusively from manager Dean Holden. Today I'm very excited, or slightly nervous, I have to say, <laughs> that we'll be heading back down memory lane with an old teammate of mine who has jetted in from Scotland to be with us today. And we'll also hear from defender Michael Hector, who has made his first Charlton start last weekend and is, of course, a former Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday man. Great to have Curbs alongside me this afternoon, although we nearly didn't, Curbs, did we? Oh. We'll come, to, at all about it. we'll come on to that in just a second, but we are delighted to have a former Attic skipper in between us. Got the winner 13 minutes into the second half when Stuart Barnes superbly struck shot was helped on his way by Atlas Allen Miller. Is a very warm welcome to. <laughs> Charlton TV, Stewie, sweaty farmer. Stewie, how are you? I'm very well. Some I'm of the barnet, well. the barnet you had on there as well. Yeah, I, the first four that was showing up there, uh, my wife, uh, <clears throat> Alison, she's, uh, she used to be an apprentice hairdresser and uh, unfortunately I was a culprit. Uh, <laughs> so you see a couple of odd shape at the cuts there, so yeah. For those of you who don't understand, we will be having <laughs> subtitles uh, a little bit later on. How does it feel to be back at the Valley? Magic, love it. That's, uh, I, this is my home, um, and just I love the place. Eh? You know, I went to various clubs after here, but it was never the same. When were you last here? I came down. Uh, uh, oh, good question. It was probably about three years ago. My son had a we surprised my son. Uh, he had a little thing in London, and we came down after the game uh, to watch the game. But there was hardly anybody here. Alison got recognised, I didn't. <laughs> so I, was, I was quite worrying, actually. So, yeah. Alison, the better half of that, there's no doubt. Great to see Sturry, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. Great yeah. memories. I just like the, when, when you go back on the old footage, the centre half scoring goals. No tackles, no headers. <laughs> no, but I think, and I've often said it about the guys that played at Sellers Park and Upton Park and then come here, that group of players, me and Gritty, we always said they could have managed themselves. Very experienced, good lads, and they just got on with it. And, uh, you know, we had no, especially me and Steve, when we first took over, we had no problems at all. Listen, we're going to have a lot of fun today, definitely. Um, <laughs> but, Cubs, I mean, 30 years with Blackwell Tunnel, you and uh, having a relationship, what happened today? Oh, you nearly didn't make it. I left at 20 past 11. It's a fine. <laughs> it's a fine, it's a fine. <laughs> <That's a week's laughs> I left at 20 past 11 and got here at 20 past 2. It's crazy, okay. isn't it? Uh, have you ever heard of Google Maps, the app? It's not the point. <laughs> it's not the point. He, do you know what, Stu? He said, <laughs> he said I, I've, I've listened to the radio and it, it wasn't on the radio. I said, Curbs, that's like 1980s. Yeah, but everything else was. There was, there was roadworks everywhere else, but they, didn't, they forgot to say the Blackwell Tunnel only had one lane. Yeah. So there's a lot of Sheffield Wednesday if you fans. Were late, would you be fine? I, I, I probably would be fine. Well, we would have been fine. Yeah, would have been fine, day, but wouldn't we? Uh, uh, there's no way I'm finding myself. <laughs> <laughs> Do as I, I say, not, not as I do. Look, I mean, looking at today, Curbs, Sheffield Wednesday, an incredible unbeaten run, 19 matches, top mm. of the league, eight wins out of nine. It's going to be tough today, isn't it? It's going to be, but you just ruled off the, the bigger sides uh, in this league we've, we've beat here. And we didn't, you didn't mention Ipswich, which another team which we drew with. I always think when that Jimmy C stands packed and there's a decent atmosphere here, then we respond, and we're going to need to respond today, that's for sure. Mm. Darren Moore's done a great job, hasn't he? And is that right, you've got a Darren Moore story? Well, <laughs> pre-season, 
And we always used to go, we always used to go down to Plymouth and stay in Nigel Mansell, you know, the racing driver's hotel, because he had a football pitch and he had a golf course. So I like to do a week there, play play Plymouth, Torquay, and Exeter. Let the guys have a couple of games of golf and really enjoy the week. So as we're coming in to Woodbury Down, the hotel on the bus, we could see on the pitch. West Bromwich Albion being run by Gary Megson. I mean, they were being run. This was Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon. They were being run. They were being flogged, right? And I'm sitting there looking at it, because I can see from the coach down there. And they finished. And as they're walking off, like they're in, they're in distress, we're getting off with our golf clubs. Right? <laughs> That's all they need to see. <laughs> so, so I said to Merv, blimey. I mean, that Gary Megson, he's a bit, you know, whatever. And I just thought, it'd have gone. See, when we play them, when we play them, yeah. right, I thought, oh, God, anyway, Darren Moore was the last one out, and I got off. I went, you're all right, mate? He went, oh. I said, what, what was that about? He went, we got beat last night, he said, and they, they, oh, they got promoted to the Premier League. He said, we've been rowing over bonuses. We got beat last night. He had the ump, and he went, right, I'm running them. He said, like, that's no way to treat us, is it? And now he's a manager. Yeah, no, So he's I wonder manager, what yeah. he does when, uh, when he's got the ump a little bit. I wonder, but I tell you what, he is doing a fantastic job, I have to say. He did a really good job at Doncaster and, yeah, and yeah. did well at West Brom, I have to say, as, as a manager. But Stuart, uh, before we move on, how much are you looking forward to catching up with your old mates? I know you did with Dean yesterday and, and, and Brownie as well, former Rooney. I actually got in touch with Webble. So I spent the, yesterday morning with Webble. Uh, we went down to the training ground. First time I've been back, uh, a few changes. Uh, at the ground, and uh, I know Dino from our time at Oldham, and uh, we had a bit of lunch together, uh, went into his office and had a wee coffee and a chat and reminisce and kept the queen. <laughs> For once. For once. Well, he does mention you, we'll hear from him in just That's a second. That's the only time but... he went into my manager's office and didn't get a ball again. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Totally fine, did, you know. <laughs> did you expect him to go on to become a manager? Uh, yeah, I think... Definitely coaching, uh, management, um, I wasn't 100% sure. You need a bit of luck to be a manager, uh, right place, right time. Uh, and the vibe I got from him yesterday is desperate to do well. The first thing he said to me, it's a proper clubber. Eh? And, and that, that was quite a startling thing to say, you know. Yeah. The facilities at, this, at the, the training ground, the, this place here, you get it right. Anything can happen. Absolutely. And finally, before we move on, what are you up to nowadays? Uh, nothing in the football at the minute. Um, and I work for a drinks company. Um, you don't drink the profits, do you? No, I'm not allowed to. Uh, I work for a company called Diageo, which is like whiskey, vodka, gin, Guinness. Oh, and uh, I basically store, uh, I'm a, a planner stroke, uh, run the site basically. Uh, the company, so. All the drinks you serve in your room on a Friday night, are you? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> the, we'll come on to that. Isn't it? Yeah, Just I think we should come on to that, because yeah. I'm the one that gets the blame here. <laughs> It was Webber who come onto it, but we will no, come we onto said, that. Uh, no, it was just beer, it wasn't no, and, and, and the shots. Scotty Parker has still never recovered from the verbal stewie give him in Scotland that time, do you remember? <laughs> I don't remember that one. Oh, that yeah, one? Brad, Brownie's yeah. come out with a few. Yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd left by then, but Brownie's come out with a few stories about what you were like. Remember, there's a family show. And, uh, we'll yeah, yeah, absolutely. Family show. Yeah. and because of that, we shall now move on. Uh, let's hear from manager Dean Holden, who spoke to Terry Smith a little bit earlier. Dean, um, three changes for the side today. Uh, you mentioned before in the press conference there were a few doubts about the game. Are these purely tactical? I know you brought uh, Innes back in and Kilkenny's back in and, and Miles is back in, which is good to see, but is that purely tactical or is it because uh, we've, we've got a few, uh, few doubts this afternoon? Uh, a little bit of both, Terry. I think um, Macaulay Bonds, um, he's missed training yesterday. He's got some, he's got some swelling and on his leg. He's, he's OK from the bench, but he's, he's missed a little bit of training, as has Chuck Zanika this week. So I think whenever you pick any team, for any game, first thought in my mind is how can we give the opponent problems? How can we give them something to think about, to you know, to be concerned with? And that's the case with this system. Equally with that, you have to balance it with you know what strengths they've got. They're a big team. Chef Wednesday, obviously, set pieces are important as well. And, and truth being told, we've been giving up too many chances in games. So uh, change the system. I think will suit us for today's game. And so we're going to be a back three. We're assuming with uh, Innes, uh, Hector, and. Uh, um Ness yep. in that back three, that's, that's what we're going for. It, uh, it'd be good to see all three uh, of, uh, of those in, in the game you've been training that way. They look good. 
Yeah, building understanding. It's a system that all three of them have come to with. They played it enough in the career to. I uh, spoke to Mark yesterday. Played it while I was out in Germany and at Fulham as well. So they're all comfortable with that, which, which is important. You know, Corey from the side on that left will, will, will give us an attacking threat where we're hoping to get him. You know, up against their wing back, whether it's Hunt or Palmer. We'll see when we get their team, and hopefully Corey can can pin them back and, and give us the spaces in midfield to operate with Scotty Fraser and Jez Raksaki in, in them pockets. But it's important that we have runners in behind them as well today. It's not just all in front and, in, and around them. You know, we're comfortable, confident, I should say, that this this system, this team, will, will, will give them problems. It's obviously. A big challenge, you know, they're on a great unbeaten run, bringing a big support behind them, so it's a big test for us, but really looking forward to it. Well, you mentioned that in the week, it, it is a big challenge, they are top of the table, they have uh, gone on a, a big unbeaten run, but it's these games that uh, you want your players to look forward to. Yeah, then there's plenty to play for, as I keep saying, everybody keeps asking about the, the, the distance to the playoffs and all the rest of it, this is this is the next game, so it's the biggest game for us, it's a chance to pull a Charlton Athletic shirt on here at the Valley, you should never underestimate how important that is for any player. And there's still loads to play for in terms of what the season looks like, in terms of for next season, all the rest of it. So, uh, all the ingredients are there for a really good afternoon. And just as we were talking about the centre halves, uh, you, um, we've got one in today, a centre half that uh, used to play for us, a legend uh, that is Stuart Barmer. You also met with Stuart and, and Simon Webster, I believe, yeah. in the week. How did that go? Did they give you any tips or? Uh... Um, or can you repeat most of the stuff today? Self-titled <laughs> legend, uh, yeah, I imagine, with, with Stu. Um, I've not seen what gear he's wearing today, but he was always in my top three of worst dressed ex-teammates. So, uh, you know what, it was really good to see him today. I didn't know he was coming down. I, I was chatting to Steve Avery after training about some of our, our youngsters and looked across and Stu was there with, with Simon. And uh, No, we had some, he, he always loves a free lunch, done he, Stu? So we went and had some, some food and, and then they came in my office for an hour. We had a cup of tea and a chat. And, Jason from Community Trust come in and you know what, you could see that the connection when Jason come in, he's been here 31 years I think, um, MBE, is it CB, I don't know, he's, he gets upset, Sir, when, he gets upset you. when you don't call him by his full <laughs> name, but uh, the connection of him and Stewie and Simon, that, that, that was really quite fascinating to see actually, so uh, we, had, we had a chat about that, uh, it's something that we're trying to build again at this football club, I think it's been a while since that connection's been there with ex-players, with supporters, with people, so it was really special actually to see, so... Um, Great to see them both. Hopefully Stewie will enjoy the game today. Don't give me too much stick, Stewie, if it's not going our way, as you used to do. Um, he always used to blame me. Every time we got run down the channel, it would always be my fault, even though his positioning was always off. But I believe he was a pretty good player for, for Charlton. Didn't start that way. Two own goals in, the, goal in, his, his yeah, two, two own goals in the space of about four games. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. But no, great, great guy. I'm obviously I'm joking. The reason I'm taking the Mickey album is because I love him so much. Great guy. Not seen him for a long time. And uh, yeah, the Charlton family, it's good to get together. Well, hopefully the day will continue in that Cheers. form. Cheers. Brilliant. Coming to that in just one second. Got to say, though, Dean put £200 behind the bar pre-match at the Royal Oak for the fans. All right. So that's a lovely touch, isn't it? Yeah, lovely. A really, really nice touch. Well, really. I'm a bit concerned that he said Stu is the worst dress we've seen or in the <laughs> top three and he didn't include Brownie. <laughs> <laughs> Brownie's in there. <laughs> I believe the hope so. Jesus. He's also bad you in terms yeah, of like you're exactly giving him right, stick all the he's, time. He's trying to get a word in now. I'm trying to get the boy to move. I'm trying to be, you know, make him look good and recovery, his fitness. And, you know, I was trying my best for him. <laughs> There's Brownie there. He's ready, isn't he, for the right to reply? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Brownie, we'll talk he's to you in a stabbed. second. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh, let's have a look at today's team because there is a, a lot to talk about here, actually, in terms of three changes but also a change of system. Uh, curbs. Ryan Innes, Gavin Kilkenny and Miles Leeburn all come in. So he's gone to sort of make it like a bigger team to match Wednesday, but also three at the back to match Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, and I think also what, perhaps to get more going forward, I, I mean, I think, I think at the end of it, Rosaki will go up top with Miles and uh, Fraser will play behind him and, or give him a free roll because that's his best position. Give him a free roll, let him pick the ball up and try and express himself. But yeah, we're big, we're stronger as, as a side. So uh, it may be something to do with matching up. I think it's more to do perhaps having a bit more going forward. A uh, couple of other things. Miles straight in as well. Was it one of those where, give me 60 minutes and I'll, I'll take you off? Because he can't be 100% fit, can he? Yeah, but I think Macaulay Bond has come in and he's had it a bit tough. He's been isolated up there. It's not really happened for him. He missed training yesterday as well, yeah, Macaulay. Yeah. yeah, so that was one. And Chucks, we know, you know. He played the 90 minutes last week and never really had an effect on the game. So I think that, that Dean's well within his reason to, to make a change and bring Miles back. It's interesting about the balance of it, and it will be interesting to see once it starts, because you've got both Corey and Jez on one side, and on the other side you've got Scott and, and Sean Clare. So it's mm. a very attacking left side. Uh, obviously Scott's an attacking midfielder. Um, 
Oh, but they're, they're very different, aren't they? They're, yeah. they're those little partnerships there. Yeah, but I think well, maybe Vasaki will go out and join Miles, and I think Fraser are playing behind. Uh, okay. that's, that's the way I see it. Um, but look at the three centre halves, big, strong. I'm not knowing the makeup of Sheffield Wednesday, but with Miles in there as well, hopefully we can deal with any set plays, and Claire, we can deal with any set plays. Uh, yeah, we look a bigger, stronger side. Uh, and Stuart, is that right? You had Scott at Airdrie? And Scott, uh, Scott Fraser at Airdrie, and he, he done really well. He came on loan from Dungeon United to gain a bit of experience, uh, and he's done very well for us. Um, got a lovely left foot, he's got good pictures, um, and it's good to see him in an attacking area because he can score goals. He just needs to believe, I think, a bit more in himself. But he, he has got ability, yeah? mm. and I think Dean wants to get a bit more like assists out of him and maybe a few more goals as well at the club. So, yeah, I mean, it, I, I don't know much about the Charlton team, but in that system, it, it is adaptable. You know, if, if you're under pressure, you become yeah. a back five, you drop your two, Fraser and Razaki, you drop them back a little bit. So you make it, you know, try and suffocate the game a little bit yeah. to then counter attack. Um, big Miles there. Hopefully, you can get a good 60 minutes out of him if he's not played for a while, and then bring on uh, somebody else. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is adaptable, so it's something you have to look at uh, as a manager. Absolutely. Uh, interesting, that one. And as you say, very adaptable. Let's have a look at the, the table then, shall we? Because despite our defeat at Derby last weekend, we do remain in the top half. Currently 11th, could go 10th for the win today. At the very top, as we see Sheffield Wednesday, they rose to the summit by virtue of their 5-2 victory over MK Dons last weekend, paired with Plymouth dropping points at home to Fleetwood. And they currently lead the way on goal difference with the game in hand. Ipswich returns to third after thrashing Forest Green 4-0 Saturday. That was their first win in four league games. They jumped above Bolton, who lost at Wickham. Wickham, Curbs, have now won five league games mm. in a row to go within three points of the top six. But, of course, Gareth Ainsworth... Yeah. Went to QPR on Tuesday. It's an interesting one, wasn't it? it? And, I, and I think that the services gave Wickham, and I think the, the, the club have come out and said we just couldn't stand in his way. I should imagine financially as well. It must be a big uplift, QPR to, to Wickham. Yeah, they've had a great run, and uh, they're, they're up and coming for us as well, aren't they, at the moment? So uh, they might do us a favour, but you're looking at them top two now. Um, it's hard to think that anyone can catch them. Yeah, I mean, Stu, I think Sheffield Wednesday, the fact they average 2.2 points per game, that tells you they're, one, going to be a tough game today, but two, yeah. probably the best team in the division? Well, according to that, they're the best team in the division at the minute. But I'll, I'll go back to when we played at Upton Park and we played Leicester City, and I think you might have played that day, actually. And we, they brought about 20,000, the, the 25,000 that was at the game. And we beat them 2-0, and they were going to win the league. See, when you're at the top of the, the table, the pressure's on you because you're up there. It's sustaining that as you go along. Anything can happen today in terms of one shot on target, a good tackle, shot, deflection, goal, anything can happen today. And I don't think this is an easy game for them. I think Charlton, you know, if they go a little bit more, as you know, you used to say to us, playing their half, why not do that? Yeah. Be physical up I there. I think Dean gets the ball forward early, but I'm not being disrespectful to our fans, but they've been ever so quiet. And yeah. they've, uh, the recent, they... recent months, with what's going on at the football club, yeah, off the pitch, as, well off as, the pitch as much as anything else. So one player can make a tackle, put yeah. a shot and goal, yeah. give it up. which will give them spirit. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the first thing you used to say to us, win a header, win a tackle, have a shot on target. In the first um, five minutes, if you do that, Let's continue this conversation <laughs> a little bit later because we're probably about 10 minutes over already. We're, we're asking the kickoff to be pushed back a little well, it bit might be. because of you. Let me tell you, it might it be. It might be, Curbs. As you say, you were stuck with the Sheffield Wednesday fans, weren't you, getting through that Blackwall tunnel? Uh, let's have a look at the fixtures today in League One. It's a full programme. The early kickoff saw Oxford face Bristol Rovers, and that was a 3 0 win for Rovers. So that's oh. an incredible victory, that one. Fifth against sixth at Oakwell as Barnsley hosts Derby, while Bolton in fourth will hope to return to winning ways at home to Port Vale. Peterborough, who we face Tuesday night, welcome Plymouth. Uh, both teams need to win to aid their respective promotion charges. Uh, we could go above Portsmouth today if we can better their results at home to Cheltenham. And it's also eighth against seventh as Wickham start the post-Gareth Ainsworth era by heading to Shrewsbury. Wickham, of course, have replaced Gareth Ainsworth with fellow legend Matt Bloomfield, who did a great job at Colchester. Any particular game stands out for you, chaps? Well, just looking at 
the top six teams playing it, basically playing each other. Um, that could have a big bearing on it. Um, I think where we are at the moment, I think listening to Dean's interview there about what what the club is, what the players are playing for. Well, if Dean is given a contract and he's here a little, he's here longer, then they're playing to stay here. You know, he's making his mind up. So you know, apart from anything else, we've we've managed to not look over our shoulders anymore, and we are looking up there. But my message to the players are: Do you want to be here next year? I mean, he can say that if he's signed a contract, yeah. but, which we're hearing is in is in talks. But do you want to be here? If you want to be here, show us. And this is a big stage. Absolutely, and it, and, and and even if you don't, it's professional pride. I, yeah. I never get that not wanting to play for whatever shirt you're playing in, but. There you go. Uh, let's take a break from today and look at club news updates now, shall we? Starting with ticketing news, as always. After today, we have two home league matches to come in March. First, first we host Accrington on Saturday the 11th and then Wickham Saturday the 25th. Tickets for both of those games can also be purchased by visiting booking.cafc.co.uk. Looking ahead to Tuesday now, supporters have advised that all fans worldwide, including those in the UK, can watch every kick of our rearranged fixture against Peterborough live on Charlton TV. Michael Kern will be hosting proceedings then. Uh, he'll have Curbs and Brownie in the studio with him and live stream match passes are priced at just £10 each. You can get yours now by heading to CAFC. .co.uk. Overseas fans who purchased a live stream match pass for the original fixture should have received a complimentary voucher to watch Tuesday's game live. This was sent via email on Thursday, so if you've not received your voucher yet, then please email website at cafc.co.uk. That's website at cafc.co.uk. Today's game against Sheffield Wednesday is, of course, only available to watch live outside of the UK and Ireland, and that is due to EFL broadcasting rules. Well, Charlton's under-21s returned to winning ways on Monday afternoon by thrashing Watford 6-1 at Sparrows Lane. A youngster, Jeremy Santos, claimed the pick of the goals with this strike from outside the box. And it was, in fact, concluding a lovely team move, and the scoring was then rounded off by winger Tolu Ladapo. Danny Senders under-21s back in action on Tuesday afternoon when they head to South Wales to take on Cardiff City at the Cardiff International Sports Stadium. And we wish them all the very best of luck in that game. Lovely finish. We announced on Monday that the Charlton Athletic Supporters Trust would be subsidising the cost of spaces on two away coaches for our away trip to Cambridge United on Saturday, March the 18th. All spaces are snapped up that very day, though additional spaces are still available at the full price of £19 each. It's the second successive season that Cast have subsidised travel through an away game, with the initiative taking place to celebrate the life of late superfan Seb Lewis. Everyone at Charlton TV would like to extend their thanks to Cast for their generosity. And our thoughts are also with the family of Seb, who of course we know would have been at the game if he was still with us. Well, the Charlton's women's team are back in action at the Oakwood tomorrow and they host Birmingham City in the fifth round of the Vitality Women's FA Cup. They kick off at two and if they can win, they will reach the quarterfinals of the competition. Tickets are priced at just £8 for adults and £1 for concessions. You can get yours online from booking.cafc.co.uk or from the turnstiles, though there will be a price increase if you do buy on the turnstiles. And finally, as this weekend marks the club's first ever Greener Games, the club have joined forces with Pledgeball, a charity that gives supporters the platform to take a stand on sustainability. Here's a little bit more about them. One Wembley's worth of fans simply reducing their shower time to five minutes saves the same amount of emissions as taking over 500 cars off the road. There are 3.5 billion fans across the planet. Imagine the impact we could have. I'm Katie Cross and I'm the founder of Pledgeball. Pledgeball is a charity started by fans, run by fans, that rallies fans to take a stand on environmental sustainability. This is the Pledgeball League. Does your team feature? How do you support your club to climb the Pledgeball League? Go to pledgeball.org forward slash fixtures. Find your team, click on it, and make one or a number of pledges in support of your club. What is a pledge? A pledge is a promise to switch to lower our footprints. From using a reusable water bottle, to going vegan two days a week, 
from cycling to work to getting solar panels. If you and your fellow fans pledge to save more emissions in the opposition, you're victorious. And the more emissions you pledge through the season, the higher you climb up the pledgeable league. As football fans, we have a huge amount of power to drive change. So join us, join Pledgeball. What are you waiting for? Well, if you'd like to get involved and get Charlton moving up the Pledge Ball League, then you can head to pledgeball.org forward slash fixtures right now. OK, staying on the subject of our greener game, Charlotte Richardson spoke to Jim White from uh, Club Partners RSK a little bit earlier to find out what else is going on this weekend. Thank you, Scott. I'm delighted to say I am joined pitch side with Jim White from our sponsors, RSK. Jim, it's a pleasure to have you on Charlton TV. First things first, tell us a little bit about RSK, the company and what you do. Absolutely. Um, well, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, so RSK is a global consultancy. Um, it's a group company. There's 175 plus now growing um, in the business uh, in terms of companies. Um, and I'd say probably the quickest way to summarize it is if you need a service within the built environment or the natural environment, we've probably got a company who um, specialize within that. Um, myself, I'm, I'm a, a management consultant. I help companies uh, with their environmental performance. Um, and I've got the privilege of doing so with, with Charlton. It's amazing to have you on board. And today is the club's first of its greener days. Can you tell us a bit about the initiative and what it really means? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Football is really unique in its kind of ability to bring people together. Um, so it's very much about engagement. Um, there's some scary challenges in, in the world at the moment, whether that's climate change, biodiversity loss. Um, so being able to bring people together and understand what we can do, the little steps we can make, little steps we can make together, I think is quite a powerful message and kind of the key thing we want to get out of this weekend. Yeah, it absolutely is. Now, RSK have been sponsors of the club now for almost a year. How has that first year been? And what are you hoping to work closely with the club on in the future? Yeah, it's been fantastic. Um, it's been great to get to know the, the club better um, and, and, and everything, the great way that's already uh, going through. And I suppose that's part of what we've tried to do um, in terms of looking at environmental sustainability. So one aspect of it is using what the club's already fantastic at. Um, so if you look at the work the community trusts do, uh, the way that they uh, embed in the community, the way they educate um, and engage, um, it's using that and then growing that with an environmental mindset as well. And I suppose the other side of it is looking more at the kind of um, strategic corporate uh, sustainability approaches that, that all businesses need to have in place kind of in, in the modern era. Um, so what we're looking to do uh, uh, hopefully soon is release a little bit more information on our kind of strategy to take that forward. Um, it'll have some of the usual things you might expect. So uh, carbon, we're currently looking at doing the first, uh, the club's first carbon footprint. Uh, but we'll also look at things like uh, water use, um, reducing the amount of waste that, that we produce uh, and potentially even looking into uh, local nature and biodiversity and how we can protect or maybe even restore that. So um, yeah, really exciting. Really exciting for me personally to be involved, but hopefully really exciting for the club as well. It's exciting, it's really interesting as well, so it's going to be uh, great to see that work unfold as well. Reflecting on today and the opportunity to perhaps raise awareness and educate supporters on the topic of sustainability, what one tip would you give to our fans if they are um, looking for ways to be more sustainable on a match day and beyond? Yeah, um, so we, um, our company has done a carbon footprint previously through uh, Sky's Game Zero initiative. Uh, and what was found on the uh, match day, the, the biggest element of carbon emissions was uh, travel to, to the stadium. Um, so I suppose that would be the, the biggest thing for a fan to consider on match day. Um, Obviously, if we can look at using public transport, if it's an option, if that's not an option, can we uh, car share instead of driving individually? Uh, or can we use things like the Valley Express? Um, and obviously, if we're close enough, can we walk or cycle? Um, I suppose that would be the biggest tip, specifically looking at uh, carbon emissions, which is obviously quite a big, big topic within that. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Charlton TV. Enjoy the game today. Absolutely. Curbs, a subject close to your heart, isn't it? Travel. I'm sure there's plenty to talk about back in the studio. Over to you, Scott. Brilliant. Even Charlotte's giving you a bit of stick because oh, I love that. You know love why? That. I phoned. Well, I phoned you. You're the one who's asked yeah. me out to everybody. Uh, well, well, you phoned me to yeah. then say, "Can you let everyone know?" Yeah. You know. So what, what am I going to do? Not tell them. Yeah, but you must have put something in there. I did. Brandy's not. telling me about Google Maps and, <laughs> and Waze and everything else. You can't go through it's, the tunnel if it's closed. It's called being in the 21st century, yeah, Curz. I'm not down with the kids oh, with no, IT, no, but no. I do have Google Maps. I have to ask my kids oh, about it. Listen. Move course up. 
move closer. That's the, that's the shout. Look, I mean, actually, we've got to mention just RSK there as well. I, we know the boss, of course, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Alan, Alan Ryder, who's a, a big Charlton fan. We even spent a bit of time with him and the gang, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's a good lad. And uh, we enjoyed it, didn't we? What, how many, two days up there? Yeah, I think it was two. Yeah, Something it like was that, two. Four. Yeah. <laughs> we drove up in the in the minibus, Charlton minibus. Jason Morgan, and Curbs, and myself, yeah. and uh, Jason. Yeah, go and on, Wayne. turn the ending. What was the ending? It broke down. Oh, of course, it broke down on the M6. <laughs> it broke down on the M6 at, at the bloody tunnel. Anyway, um, yeah. Alan, if you're watching, and everybody part of the RSK as well, we're very thankful here at Charlton to be part of the RSK family, and, and hopefully you are too to be part of Charlton. Um, should we go down memory lane now? <laughs> I thought we'd just done it. Earlier. No, 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 no. no. Oh, we've got more. No, we've got, we got, we got more. Oh, Jesus. Let's go from the very start, shall we? Lenny Lawrence uh, signed you in August 1990. This you can four photos. You can see an apprentice cut in there. That was Alison. <laughs> uh, I was the victim. This time was the victim. Um, I mean, I don't know where to go with that, to be honest with you, with the photos. Curbs looks like he's been in Barbados, another one of his holidays. <laughs> he's always away, by the way, Curbs. He's got four holidays a year. Good memories, though, Brilliant. Stewie. Well, t tell us about your memories of joining back in 1990. Uh, well, what happened was I was, um, I was about to break in the, uh, the first team at Celtic, so we were away to Germany uh, pre-season. And with Paul Elliott being there, uh, I think Lenny had been speaking to Paul uh, and made, he made an offer. Obviously, Charlton had been relegated from the, the old first division, lost a few players and Joe McLaughlin and etc. Uh, so I was just obviously a young boy. They were going to cut the cloth a little bit, money-wise, obviously. And uh, the same Simon as uh, an experience and me as sort of to come in and help uh, when Simon got injured or whatever. Uh, and that was it, really, to be quite honest. Do you remember your first home, well, not first, but home debut against Leicester? Do you remember what, you know See, what's coming? Yeah, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, let's have a look at it. Oh, is it there? Oh, Jesus, God, I've not seen this. I've never <laughs> seen this. <laughs> oh, Barmer's put it into his own net. Unbelievable. Great. I mean, it's a great finish, Curbs. No, I'm defending from really there. I'm st I'm st oh, Jesus. Uh, he, obviously, he obviously was going to put it round the post and got it completely wrong. Home debut, yeah. what a start <laughs> that was. But I have to say, after that dodgy start, you definitely established yourself in, in the first team over the next few years. 92-93, yeah. arguably your best season. And you definitely scored a, a very good goal against Watford, didn't you? Yeah. What, how do you rate that season? That was a season... Went back to the valley. It's, it's quite funny actually because it was another season I won Player of the Year. And uh, what happened was um, I played right back. And I, all I'd done was I'd shown Newton in front of me, gave him the ball and backed him up. Didn't overlap like yourself, you were an overlapper, me. Yeah, <laughs> stay on the halfway line. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, there you go, Newt. And I'll just, um, so, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, nice here though. Um, but let's uh, take things off the pitch now. And um, we, we saw Brownie a little bit earlier. He was your roomie. What have you got to say about him? Brilliant guy. That's it. Brilliant guy, and that's it. What happens in the room stays in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. You obviously, you, obviously, you obviously didn't give him any dress sense. You didn't help him out, did you? We actually used to share our clothes. <laughs> yeah. well, so, so Dean's giving you stick about your clobber. Yeah. Uh, Curves gives Brownie stick about his clobber. That's some room, isn't it? With it was clobber. a fantastic room. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was a brilliant guy. And, you know, still in touch with him every now and then. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Brown, Brownie, let, let's bring you in. We've got to bring you in because, look, he, he's clearly panicked there, hasn't he? And said, <laughs> look, you're absolutely a great guy. Love everything about you. How many secrets have you got on him? Well, the thing is, Scotty, he's going to say that, isn't he? Because he knows I've got a dozen. <laughs> I've got dozens and dozens on him. But, look, he's right. What, what happens in the room stays in the room. But we, we room together almost by default because nobody else would go with him. And... You know what Curves was like, he bullied me and, uh, and he made me go with Sweaty. So, uh, but it turned into a wonderful relationship over that seven years. I think we, it was a long time we roomed together. But uh, yeah, like, like I said, I set up in the lounge. One of the downsides to football, Scott, is we all drift off after our careers and we don't stay in touch enough. And when you see somebody you haven't seen for a very long time, 
all those memories come flooding back. It's been wonderful to see him and speak to him, and I shall have a pint with him after the game without any shadow of a doubt. Can you give us one story, Brownie, or is it well, all the, of them Well, I mean, the one, the one story is, is you know, when, when obviously Paul Koncheski and, and Scott Parker got into the side and they were rooming together, they were 16, 17, and you just can't do it now, but, but, but Stewie basically was banging on their door and scaring the life out of them, <laughs> so much so that we're, we're told that they wedged a chair up against the handle in case he got in. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the rest of the story is really, Scotty, will have to remain private. <laughs> We'll have to uh, have that pint a little bit later and, uh, and we can reminisce. I'd have to say, I'm absolutely loving being alongside you again, Stewie. It's been absolutely brilliant. Um, I mean, t tell us then, Kurz, what, what was he like? You know, one of those senior pros that you touched on earlier. Yeah, yeah. I oh, uh, inherited him a little bit. And, um, you know, as I said earlier, myself and Steve, we just packed up playing, really, hadn't we? And uh, I don't suppose we were part of the gang. I wasn't anyway, but... Gritty might have been, more stories I keep hearing. But um, no, we, we relied heavily on the senior players. And, you know, I, I go back to all the time I was at the football, I was at the football club. That first season at, at Upton Park was make or break for, for myself and Steve, to be fair. But I think it was for the club. You know, we're supposed to have been back here. We've gone to Upton Park. We was playing in front, as, as Stuart just said, playing in front of four or 5,000 fans. Um, you know, and the season we had finishing seventh, and we should have finished in the playoffs, shouldn't yeah, we? Yeah. We finished seventh, and I think it infused people to get involved in the club, yeah. i.e. Richard Murray, Martin Simons, Roger Orwin, and eventually put the money in to get us back. Yeah. Uh, so I've got a lot of, lot of feelings for that group of players. And, is that uh, me as well, Cubs? Are you, are you, are you yeah, saying you're not feeling for me as well? Thing, yeah? Yeah, yeah, you've no, never, no, you've no. never said that before. You know? No, I've never said it before, but the only thing you give me the up about is that you went to, Ar uh, you went to Chelsea instead of Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll, I'll chuck this at you. Because um, we was offered more money. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly on. David from Upshire, tell Cubs that it's an hour from Epping around the M25 to Charlton, according to Ways. It wouldn't have sent you to the Blackwall. I love oh, no. that. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, no. Stewie, What's honestly, it? genuinely, and we've got to move on now, but it's an absolute pleasure to be alongside you again. Great to see you. Uh, let's move on because uh, Michael Hector is a former Sheffield Wednesday Player of the Year winner, and of course, he got his uh, first full start for Charlton. So it's a big game for him today. And uh, Terry Smith caught up with him earlier. Michael, thanks for joining us pre game here for the, uh, the home title of Sheffield Wednesday. Um, Second start, it will be in consecutive games. Um, uh, how did last week go? You hadn't, uh, you hadn't played for a while. Yes, you came on briefly the week before that, but uh, first start in a while. How, how was that? Yeah, obviously not the result or performance uh, I wanted personally or as a team, but um, yeah, it was obviously good to be back out there and uh, good to play obviously 90 minutes. And yeah, ho hopefully I can uh, obviously maybe get fitter and stuff like that. But yeah, no, for me it was, it was a positive to, to play the 90 minutes. Obviously the result was what we wanted, but um, yeah, it's onwards and upwards. I think from a fan point of view and from people looking at the game though, uh, your first 90 minutes in a while, probably surprised a few because, and, and, and your performance because of that, because you didn't seem to, didn't seem like you'd been away for a long time at least, so uh, you've obviously kept your fitness levels up. Yeah, no, for me obviously, um, as a centre back, it's, it's a bit easier to, to, to get 90 minutes uh, under your belt, but um, yeah, no, for me it was just about obviously positioning and stuff like that and, and the talking and just getting through that that first 20 minute period was a bit of a was a bit of a blow but yeah after that I felt I felt comfortable in the game and yeah obviously we can uh, obviously put in a better performance today I mean, if you're going to come back in and you're going to play uh, your first 90 minutes uh, against one of the top sides of the division you're going to do so again today uh, so uh, and a back three as well um, you played in there before I guess as a back three uh, how does that feel yeah no for me I've played uh, many of my clubs I've, I've been at um, I've opted at in a back three and I think nowadays most teams switch between obviously back four and a back five so um, yeah for me I'm, I'm comfortable in playing either. And you're uh, bringing along to your, to your right obviously you've got Ryan Innes who's, who's uh, long in the tooth in terms of football but you've also got to your left uh, a young man who's come through our academy and, uh, and joined us uh, while he was quite young so uh, do you take that on board? Do you, uh, does, he, does he look up to you already? Um, yeah, no, left, uh, Lucas Ness? yeah he asked me questions and stuff like that but I thought obviously last week he was outstanding again and um, yeah he's been playing really well and I'm just obviously here to, to help him and, and to, to guide him and obviously any advice he needs, obviously I'm, I'm here to, to obviously help him. But yeah, I feel like he's, he's performing well and it's just obviously little bits that he needs to tweak, but he's been playing really well this season. And today, of course, uh, against one of your old sides, you're going to meet some old friends this afternoon coming down to the Valley. Uh, desperate for them, I guess, because it's one of your old sides to do well, just not this afternoon. Yeah, no, obviously the, 
obviously this afternoon that we're not friends, but um, obviously after the game, obviously I hope they get promoted. But obviously now we're looking to obviously pick up three points today, and that's that's our goal. And obviously they want three points, but at the end of the day, it's, it's business, and we need to worry about ourselves and not them. Cheers for joining us, Michael. Thank you. Appreciate Good luck. It. Thanks for time. Because look, he, he made his uh, debut, a full debut, um, last week. Didn't quite work out in terms of uh, the, the result, but yeah. we, we saw bits of him, didn't we? Uh, the, yeah. the, the class that he's got. Yeah, he's passing out from the back, which is what you know you want nowadays. And uh, you know he's been a, a really good player over the years. I don't know why he's found himself in this position, not being at a club for six months. And I, I think Dean has seen him in training. Gone, Mike, we're going to sign you. Yeah. We need to get you fit. I thought it was a bit. Too early last week, and he got done for the cross, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't quite get there, but he's going to be an asset to the team. And I think that you know, Dean see enough to go into three centre halves today, and he's in there. Yeah. And, and, and when you're a senior pro, even if you're not fully fit, and you've got a younger pro alongside you, 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 you can talk them through the game, can't you? Yeah. You've got. To, that's where you've got. You to get do. Them through your running as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Drop off. On you go, son. But, but that was what it was all about. Scott. You, we played with injuries. Um, Players nowadays don't want to do that, uh, and that that that's soft in my eyes. I know you want to, you're looking after yourself and that, like, but you know we look after each other. You played left back, I played left centre back. We looked after each other, and that, that's what should happen. Should be partnerships all over the park, mm. and so yeah. Let's have a look at uh, both sets of teams, shall we? Because Sheffield Wednesday obviously being top. Um, you know, they're looking here, they know it's going to be a tough game, but they will be looking to come away with all three points. Not only have they won eight of the last nine and looking for 20 league games unbeaten, but they have the best away defence in the EFL as well, conceding just nine goals. Um, there's obviously Barry Bannon that people talk about, but George Byers is an absolutely fantastic player. Aidan Flint is an experience there. Will Volks is a good midfielder. Curbs, they've got yeah. experience and just know-how in this division yeah. Everywhere, haven't they? And fantastic backing, haven't they? You know, with their supporters. Um, another club, we look at it, and it's another Premier League club in the wrong division for all sorts of reasons. Mm. So, you know, it's going to be a tough old game, but I hope we respond to the atmosphere that's going to be generated. So, I mean, talking to three at the back as well, I and mean, we normally play with a four, but the lads are experienced with, yeah. with, with a three. Did you personally like three at the back? And, and did it take a bit of time to get used to the the very subtle difference of positions. At Charlton, we never played with the Cubs at three at the back. Uh, when I went to Wigan, it was I never played it before, and I ended up playing left of a three. Ball was going down the side of me, you know, turning like a ship, you know. And Where's Mint now? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I found that a little bit strange, but I did adapt towards it, um, and we had a good team at, at Wigan by playing that that system. Um, it is difficult, but you can also suffocate the game as well. You can drop off the game or you can go and attack the game. There's variations within that. Um, but just defend. But then players have played three in the back, haven't they? You know, yes. we, they, they, they're used to it. Claire's the wing back, he can do that. So. And, and we've looked, we've got six home wins this season. They've all come up against sides position 14th or high, and three of them are currently in the top six. So, as you mentioned, Curbs, that. that the big clubs, bring in the big fans or yeah. lots of fans, can lift us. Absolutely. There's a, you know, it's not full, which is a bit disappointing. Um, but I'm sure our fans will have to perhaps, you know, looking at our Sheffield Wednesday contingent, you know, get behind the team from the start. Not, don't wait for the team to, to give them a lift. You know, you get going now. Absolutely. OK, well, there will be a, a minute's applause for the legendary commentator John Motson, who, of course, sadly passed away this week. As a boy, uh, the Valley was the first ground he ever visited. But let's get to our commentary team now, shall we? Terry Smith, Greg Stubbley and Stevie Brown. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Stuart. And thank you, Curbs. And uh, oh, there's plenty to talk about. Um, you're very welcome to the Valley. It's great to see Stuart Barmer in the, uh, in the box, in the studio with the boys. And uh, it means not least that alongside us, is uh, our very own Viking warrior, Mr. Steve Brown. Uh, I looked it up, uh, by the way, before we get into the minutes of course, and uh, Bryn Yar is a Viking warrior for Armoured Warrior, which is almost like Brown. Uh, very similar. And yeah. Viking warriors were also called berserkers, which sits you down on the ground, quite frankly. <laughs> um, but on a, on a slightly more serious note, we are going to pay homage to one of the best, if not the best, depending on your point of view. John Watson had a soft spot for Charlton, and Charlton, there's a soft spot for John Watson. 
during his time as a commentator.